I'm Atubo Jones and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's word to you today. Praise God. Hey, we are talking about something very, very interesting. And I pray this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Now, I teach in such a manner that you can apply these things personally. And if you apply them, you see results and you give God praise. But then also I encourage you, if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so immediately. Just stop this right now and suppress that subscription button and subscribe. And then also I encourage you to share this message with everyone on your contact. Let them get blessed. Praise God. All right, then before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Say with me, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in jesus name amen praise god i'll share with you now we're, we're talking about the, op the, the open the, the opening of the book god is speaking about doing in your life what you have never seen before that which he has written that is a secret it's time for it to begin to manifest in your life so i began to share with you on certain instructions the lord have given now i'm still sharing the background to make you understand the purpose of this thing so we're talking about why it's important to observe the watches observe the watch if you didn't listen to yesterday's broadcast please go do because we're continuing from yesterday so yesterday so yesterday i was talking about how jesus died within 12 and 3 p.m so take note of that timing 12 and 3 p.m jesus actually died at 3 p.m but from 12 noon there was darkness on the face of the earth so that 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 time and every angel was withdrawn every angel was withdrawn there was chaos there was total darkness when you say darkness not just physical darkness the word of god was scarce nothing nothing spiritual was happening <laughs> praise god that's what it took for jesus the son of god to die that's very serious praise god now so take note of that time then another thing i want to show you is acts chapter 2 and verse 15. you remember on the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 and verse 15. now on the day of pentecost when the holy ghost descended i'm reading from the hc sb translation on that day you know what happened the big disciples began to speak in tongues as they were led or inspired by the holy spirit and then people began to say ah these men are drunk and then they began to talk then verse 15 for peter began to speak let me start from verse 14 but peter stood up with 11 raised up his voice and proclaimed to the men of judah and all who you resident of jerusalem let me explain this to you and pay attention to my words for these people are not drunk as you suppose seeing it's only nine in the morning praise god what does this tell you it means the holy ghost came on them about nine in the morning so take note of this time also, 9 a.m. Now we've looked at 12, we've looked at 3 p.m., okay? And then we've looked at, yeah, 12 and 3 p.m. Elijah was 3 p.m., Daniel was 3 p.m., Jesus was 12 and 3 p.m. Now you're finding Peter here proclaiming that, look, the Holy Ghost came just 9 a.m. in the morning. Take note of this timings. That's what I'm that's what I'm showing to you. Praise God. Take note of these timings. And then we find another one. The disciples in Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. Peter and John, they went to pray in the temple. And what time did they go to pray in the temple? Now, Peter and John were going up together to the temple complex at the hour of prayer at 3 in the afternoon did you see this the hour of prayer that's when he says the hour of prayer this is when the disciples fixed for prayer time and what time did they fix three 
in the afternoon. You are seeing three o'clock re reoccurring again. Three in the afternoon. It's the hour of prayer. Now you know the story. This was when they healed the beauty, the man, the, the crippled man at the beautiful gates. Praise God. Then also you find another story in Acts chapter 10. The story of Cornelius, Acts chapter 10 and verse 3. Acts chapter 10 and verse 3. I'm showing you all this. Let me, let me just read from verse 1. There was a man in Caesarea named Cornelius, a centurion of which was called of what was called the Italian regiment. He was a devout man and feared God along with his whole household. He did many charitable deeds for the Jewish people and always prayed to God. Now take note, he always prayed to God. About three in the afternoon. Did you see that? About three in the afternoon, he distinctly saw in a vision an angel of God who came in and said to him, Cornelius, what time did the angel come to him? 3 p.m. Praise God. Now, you know the angel gave him an instruction. He said, look, send men to Joppa. Go and search for one Peter. Take note of when the angel visited him. 3 in the afternoon. Now, verse, let's, let's keep some verses. And verse nine the next day now colin has sent men to go look for peter now telling us peter's part the next day as they were traveling and nearing the city peter went up on the roof housetop about noon so peter went there about 12 noon then he became hungry so he, he now remember the time the disciples pray the hour of prayer at least one that we know of was three o'clock okay now you find um here it says Peter went up to pray at noon. Why noon? Why not 11? Why not 8? <laughs> See that? Why noon? He went to pray about 12. He went up to pray at 12. Then he became hungry and wanted to eat. But while they were preparing something, he went into a visionary state. He saw heavens open. And then you know the whole story of what happened. But guess what? It was at 3 o'clock. Now another instance also, remember Paul and Silas, you know, when they were locked up in prison. The Bible says at midnight, something happened at midnight. While they were praying, there was an earthquake. The, the prison gates were opened. An angel showed up and freed them from all the, the, the bondage and chains that they were tied with. And then also Paul, you remember when he had the experience, when he met the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus. It was 12 noon. In the afternoon, Paul himself said that in, in um, Acts chapter 22 and verse 6, describing the event. He said, this thing happened at noon, 12 o'clock. He said, I saw a light that was beyond the sun. Praise <laughs> God. Now, these timings lets you understand that, look, there is something about this timing and spiritual movements. Take note of this. There is something about this timing and spiritual. That's why I'm taking time to show you all the scriptures. So you find, for example, Daniel. The Bible said Daniel used to pay three times a day. Now, three times a day, you have the day watches and the evening watches. You know, the, the Jewish calendar, the way they read their timing, they start the day from evening. So it says evening and morning. So they actually start the next day from six o'clock. If a Jewish man wants to fast, for example, he's going to start fasting from 6 p.m. You, you start fasting from 6 a.m. So it says 6 to 6. So 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Jewish man starts his fast from 6 p.m. in the evening. So when that's how they celebrate the Sabbath. The Sabbath starts from, I think, 6 p.m. So from 6 p.m., the day before the Sabbath, all movement shut down until 3 o'clock. I think about 3 o'clock the next day. So that's the pattern. They follow this pattern. So when Daniel prayed three times a day, he usually prays at 6 a.m., 12 noon, at 3 p.m. Most times that's when people they set their pattern. Now, why do they do this? I'll tell you. Because they understand. Now, there's something I'm going to say to you. I think I've said that on this broadcast before. Just maybe you missed it. 
Jesus made a very powerful statement to that woman at the well. He made a statement. He said, salvation is of the Jews. Now, we have not really looked at that statement, but that's a very deep statement that Jesus made. He said, you worship what you do not know. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. Now, he didn't mean only the Jews will be saved. He's saying the pattern of salvation is found with the Jews. So the Jewish people are a people who have a history that is directly connected with God. So when Jesus says salvation is of the Jews, what, he's meant, what he meant is look at their lives, look at their pattern, look at their tradition. Now, of course, we know corruption has come. If you can find the, of course, scripture tells us their patterns. If you can find their patterns, then you will understand the flow and the mind of God. And nothing has changed. It's still the same flow. The only difference today is that we are motivated by the Spirit of God. So we are not just with them observing laws, but then we function by the Spirit of God. But when we look back, you react, and that's the truth about everyone. If you're really following the Lord, you will look back and then you realize that there are things the Holy Spirit have led you to do that flow with their patterns. Why? Because the Spirit will never tell you anything that goes against His person, that goes against His word, that goes against what He has instituted. That's why I don't understand when people say we should not tithe. That tithing is of the Old Testament. It's so foolish to think that way, I'm sorry to say. It's very foolish to think that way. The Holy Spirit, you know, that's always put up a challenge. Show me one person. One person should come out and say the Holy Spirit specifically told him that tithing is wrong. It's a challenge I put up any time. Anyone who says we should not die, tell me. Don't tell me from your study that that can be misleading. Tell me the Holy Spirit told you that it is wrong to tight. He will never do that. Why? He will never speak against his ordinance. He will never lead you against his ordinance. And something like tithing and offerings, they were not ordinances that were made for a purpose or a reason. There were things that were done. Titan, for example, started with Abraham before the law came. And Abraham is the father of us all. You see? So he set a pattern. All his children follow the pattern. You see Jacob Titan. Why? He received it from his father, Abraham. Isaac. So he knew what to do. He didn't go, oh, somebody should teach me. No, he knew. He knew what Titan meant. He was taught. He had seen it being practiced. Now that's to tell you, you know, like people have heard preachers say this. And it's so, so deep an error that Abraham only paid tight once. You only read that Abraham paid tight once. If you want to follow that principle, you will lead people astray. Because we can now count how many times did the disciples pray. I will say that's the only time you need to pray. You understand what I'm saying? You can now count how many. That's so wrong. The Bible is said, let us know if everything is to be written, the world cannot contain the book. So how do we know Abraham paid tithe more than once? It's very simple to know. For the grandson of Abraham to come up and talk about titan then you should know that this thing was not just a one-time event. This thing was a tradition. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So now, why these timings? Why, why do we see angelic visitation associated with these timings? I will tell you why. Because those are gates. Those are gates. If God is sending an angel, most likely the angel will come at the gate of time. At the gate of a watch. Are you following me? If God will send a messenger, the messenger from heaven now, the messenger will come. Somehow, the, the visitation aligns with the watches. Because how? Because it is by that gate that a new wisdom is released. So as that new wisdom is coming, new angels are coming in. So that time is the season where the gates are open. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, let's go back to what the Lord was saying in Proverbs chapter 8. 
Proverbs chapter 8. Oh, makunde brede keshep aliha. I say if you understand this, you're going to start seeing miracles in your life. If you want to stay there and be arguing, oh, must we? Do as it pleases you. I share the word of God to help you. If you believe, that's it. If you believe. Now, verse 34, Proverbs 8, 34. Anyone who listens to me is happy. I'm reading from the HCSB translation. Anyone who listens to me is happy. Watching at my door every day. At my doors every day. Waiting by the post of my doorway. Now, what's he saying? Those are gates. If you are one who pays attention to the Holy Spirit, then this is what the Lord is telling you to do, especially in this season. Watch. Be attentive at every gate. Now, as much as you can. Be attentive at every gate. I told you what the gates are. 12, 12 midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 noon, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m. Those are gates of the watches. Be attentive for what? For wisdom from him. Be attentive for what? Visitations. If you are expecting a miracle, if you are expecting the Lord, now because you see, you need this wisdom from the Lord to flow with every angelic activity. Now imagine if you begin to speak the language of angels. What do I mean the language of angels? The Lord is commanding angels to come do something in a particular time at their watch. Now they are coming in and you are receiving wisdom from the Holy Spirit. You are receiving instructions from the Holy Spirit. And then you begin to speak the language of that watch. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You begin to speak the language of that watch. Now, what does it mean? If you want to pray, this is an advice. If you want to pray, tie your prayer to the watches. If you, for example, maybe you need an emergency miracle something is really pressing you need to decide or you need a miracle try this take out a day to fast 24 hours is enough and tell yourself you know what i'm gonna pray at every watch so at every watch you can use your alarm or stuff at every watch pray and wait you can pray for 10 minutes you can pray for 15 minutes just pray if you can pray in the spirit, hallelujah. Pray in the spirit and watch. At every watch. So you wake up at 12 midnight, 5 minutes to 12. Be in the prayer at that time. And, and pray into the watch. And then wait. Have your notes and your writing material, write, writing pen or something. And wait. Try it again at the next what 3 a.m. Try it again at 6 a.m. Try it again at 9 a.m. Try it again at 12 noon, 3 p.m. I'm telling you the truth. You will receive a visitation. When I say you receive a visitation, either you receive a vision or an understanding will just hit you. Clearly, you will know what to do. Or a miracle will happen. And most times, those kind of miracles are not miracles that you are used to. Try this. Of course, I know you're not, you, you may not be able to pray at everybody, but then hear me. He says, the one who listens. He says, blessed is the man who listens to me. How often do you listen to the Holy Spirit? Two, four, seven. All right? But then he says, particularly, if you are watching daily at my gates what are his gates these for a day now these are the watches there are there are people who have set patterns in their lives for example the year begins they make up their mind at the quarter at the beginning of every quarter i'll take out time to fast and pray now if you know patterns in scriptures number three is very important the number three it's very, very important. 
So for the at the beginning of the, the quarter, for example, or some even do it every month. But then if you follow this pattern at the beginning of the quarter, take out three days to fast and pray. And when you fast and pray, practice praying according to the watches. You are going to enter into dimensions. I'm telling you the truth. Now, this is what the Spirit of God is instructing you to do. Pay attention to the watches. There are wisdoms that he's going to be releasing at that time. And when what you hear from him, believe. What you hear from the Lord, do what? Believe. And see the kind of manifestation that you're going to walk into. Now it's left for you to believe and act on it or to say, mm -hmm, um, you have come. I didn't say worship any angel. In, in, in there, you're not called to worship angels. But flow because the angels are coming with writings your script for the holy spirit to now begin to give them those deep things you have to come up to speed to understand him so when the angels do their job you can flow with them praise god thank you holy spirit i pray for you that your understanding will be opened and enlightened to receive this truth and as you obey May the Lord visit you indeed. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.